Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Operation Freedom Briefings. The goal of these briefings and my weekly radio show, Operation Freedom, is to provide you information the bought-off, lamestream, fake media will not present and will not touch. You can join us for the radio show. It's free and it's live every Sunday from 2 to 5 Eastern. It's very simple. All you have to do is go to DaveJanda.com, right toward the top, middle part of the homepage, hit the Listen Live button, That'll take you to Wham Talk 1600 streaming for service. Hit the play button and you're with us. Great guests, great analysis, and again, information you're not going to get through the what some people outside that window on the People's Republic of Ann Arbor still call the mainstream media that we call the bought-off lamestream fake media. Today's topic we're going to focus on is on um, freedom. And in, the, and in some cases, the freedom of one particular individual, General Michael Flynn, who has been a political prisoner of the deep state, the globalist syndicate, the New World Order crowd, whatever you want to call them. He's been a political prisoner, as has his family, for the past almost four years now. But his freedom is not just confined to General Flynn. It really encompasses every American's freedom and the freedom of our country and, frankly, the future of our country because it's all based on restoration, reinstitution of the rule of law. You see, one of the first entities that the deep state targeted decades ago was the rule of law that you and I who are, um, well, we're considered to be useless eaters uh, by the deep state, that we're utilizing resources that are meant for them. And out of their benevolence, they're allowing us to inhabit the earth until they deem it, well, that our presence is no longer welcome. Sound sinister? It is. Sound conspiratorial? Well, some people will say that, but it's the truth. Their own working playbook, Agenda 21 and their follow-up version, Agenda 2030, is indicative that they are intent on stripping not just every person in America of our freedoms and liberties, but their intent on destruction of those of us that they consider to be useless eaters, the 95, 99% of the inhabitants of the world. That's our enemy. The problem is, is that many people don't know who our enemy is and what their true evil intentions are. Folks that come to the forefront are slandered, are libeled, are defamed, are put through the ringer over the rule of law system that has been created by the deep state. We've seen this time and time again. And if it's not through the Department of Justice, it's through another tentacle of the deep state in our country, such as the IRS. As you well know, Myself and my family were targeted under the Obama administration by the IRS. Why? Because of my opposition to Obamacare. I was not the only one. Thousands of individuals were. And this is what we have found with General Flynn. He was targeted from the very beginning as an individual by that the deep state saw as a threat to them, which is why they made him and his family a political prisoner. And if it were not for his phenomenal attorney, Sidney Powell, I believe General Flynn would not be a free man today. You see, right now we're seeing a dichotomy. We're seeing General Flynn and his statements even though he's under house arrest, if you will, he still makes public statements 
to let all of us know what's happening. And on the other side of the ledger, we have the generals and admirals who are owned and operated by the deep state. We've seen this over the past month with General Mattis, General Kelly, General Colin Powell, Admirals McRaven and Mullen. We've seen it time and time again about them attacking President Trump for upholding the oath he took to the Constitution in assuming the presidency of the United States. And we hear and see their statements. And they're very different from the statements and actions of a true patriot, General Flynn. You see, the deep state is petrified. The reason why they're trying to prolong his house arrest, his political imprisonment is because they know when he gets back on the field, the game changes. And it changes on behalf, in favor of you and me and the millions of freedom fighters that are not indentured servants of the deep state. Let's look at what's happened over the past couple of weeks with General Flynn. On um, June 12th, the Court of Appeals in D.C. heard the, the, what's called a writ of mandamus that General Flynn and his attorney, Sidney Powell, filed against Judge Sullivan. You see, back on May 7th, the Department of Justice said, we're dropping the case on General Flynn. We've had an independent review by Jeff Jensen out of Missouri. And that federal prosecutor, who is also a former FBI agent, has reviewed all the documents related to General Flynn, and essentially there was prosecutorial misconduct. And that, in fact, General Flynn was framed. And the Department of Justice said, we're no longer going to recommend prosecution of General Flynn, and we recommend dropping the case. That was May 7th. One would think by May 8th, the judge, Judge Sullivan, would say, whoa, prosecutorial misconduct. Well, there is no prosecutor, and the defendant, General Flynn, is fine with dropping the case. There are no two parties in this any longer. It's over. Instead, Judge Sullivan did not allow the case to be dropped. In fact, he asked friends of the court to be brought in to, to, if you will, put other opinions forward about whether this case should be dropped. This is beyond unconstitutional. He asked a retired judge, Gleason, out of New York, who penned an op-ed in the Washington Post previously about how the Justice Department shouldn't drop this case. Well, wait a minute. How is this an independent review that Sullivan supposedly was looking for? Of note, earlier in the case, a number of supporters of General Flynn tried to file Friends of the Court briefs and were denied on at least 17 occasions and up to 24 occasions. Yet now he's asking for and then he said, maybe we should also try to prosecute him. So, you know, a judge is supposed to call balls and strikes. But as Sidney Powell pointed out in a motion, Judge Sullivan's not just trying to call balls and strikes. He's trying to pitch and catch and play shortstop and first base. And his decisions are coming out of left field. A writ of mandamus is a huge legal step. And the Department of Justice filed in support of General Flynn, in support of the writ of mandamus. And it went in front of the three-judge panel, Rao, Henderson, and Wilkins, on June 12th. On June 11th, General Flynn went on record and issued a, a note, a letter, to all of us. It was published on June 11th. General Flynn, 
Forces of evil want to steal our freedom in the dark of night, but God stands with us. Here's what he said. There are seminal moments in American history that test every fiber of our nation's soul. We are facing one now. Revolutionary forces are causing every American citizen to question which direction the country is heading. To determine the outcome, we must examine our nation's history to pro pro project ourselves forward into the future. Once again, tyranny and treachery are in our midst. And although we feel we've descended into a hellish state of existence, we must never forget hell is conquerable. Prayer is the greatest weapon and a consciousness of God is the ultimate, quote, thought of the day, end quote. The idea or notion of a heaven on earth is the very real sense of being free. Freedom is oxygen. Like the air we breathe that keeps our lungs full and our hearts beating, the celestial feeling of freedom brings a sense of peace to our souls. Freedom must never be taken for granted. Securing our freedom demands a high price, and that price requires hard work and sacrifice. Both will bind us all by the value they produce. But only if we are willing to seek new opportunities and new ideas. Those who have sacrificed the most, those who have given the last true measure of devotion that derives from the love of faith and family and the cause of freedom, for all of us to be free and for the betterment of our republic and the free world, cannot be allowed to have died in vain. Theirs is the ultimate sacrifice, and heaven is their reward. Our future, the future of our children and grandchildren, and the future of our country are at stake. God will not give way to the care of the devil or allow us to be left to the evil vices of those who would steal our freedom in the dark of night. He will not. Instead, God will stand with us, as he always does. Lieutenant General Retired Michael Flynn. Some people said, well, he shouldn't have put that statement out the day before the hearing because the judges will, well, they're not going to like that. No, he did what was right. He did what was right for you and me and our country. It might not have been right, quote, right for him. But this is beyond him. This is beyond General Flynn. This is about the future of our country, as he points out, for our children and our grandchildren, and for not letting go of freedom. That hearing occurred on June 12th. I've talked about it on this platform before. And on my subscription side, I, I felt that there were two judges that were going to go his way and one definitely not. On June 23rd, last week, the Department of Justice, before the decision came out, released some more information, what's called exculpatory information. Information on General Flynn that revealed his innocence, that he was targeted. This time, it was notes that were released, handwritten notes from Peter Strzok, that as Sidney Powell stated, was, were written on January 4th, 2017. That day is important. It was the day before a meeting occurred at the White House on January 5th. But there apparently, according to Strzok, maybe it was a phone call, conference call, but there was a call and there was an interaction between Obama and Biden and Comey. And um, in that interaction on January 4th, President Obama told Comey to quote, when it related to, Doc, to General Flynn, quote, get the right people on this, end quote. This being the case against General Flynn. On that same day, Joe Biden brought up the Logan Act, which has never been enforced. That's when someone reportedly deals with a foreign country without the approval of the United States government. 
this uh, from the Daily Caller's Chuck Ross. The Department of Justice on June 23rd released handwritten notes from the Michael Flynn case taken by former FBI official Peter Strzok, which were, quote, totally exculpatory, end quote, for the former national security advisor. The notes taken on January 4th, 2017 were released to Flynn's lawyers under seal by Michael R. Sherwin, acting U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, and are, quote, very significant. They were discovered by a federal prosecutor, that's Jensen, appointed to review the Flynn case. You see, the reason why that's so important, that date, is because this conversation with Obama and Biden and Comey of which Strzok was either present or was on a conference call and took notes. They spoke about the transcripts of the call between the calls between General Flynn and the Russian ambassador Kislyak. Earlier, the Department of Justice had released exculpatory information in the transcripts, finally, after over three years, showing that there was nothing illegal in the conversation between General Flynn, who was the incoming national security advisor at that point, and the Russian ambassador. And in fact, General Flynn in that conversation was not the one to bring up sanctions. Kislyak was, but General Flynn didn't bite on that, and he didn't ask them to remove any kind of sanctions, which was the claim of some of the globalists that were trying to frame General Flynn. 